Hey Techno Studs! In the rest of this module, we're going to be talking about a lot of different vulnerabilities and a lot of different types of attacks. So before we do that though, is I want to give an overall scope of what are some of the different common types of attacks. So in this video, let's cover the common types of attacks. In this video, we're going to start out by talking about common types of attacks. And those attacks happen because of vulnerabilities. So let's talk about the different categories of vulnerabilities. We're gonna get into the specific ones, technology, process, and people. And then we'll talk about the life cycle of a software vulnerability. A threat agent is going to need some sort of vulnerability or leverage to get into your network or be able to steal from it or whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. I think of it like this crowbar. This crowbar, if it were to go up against a flat surface, it's really not going to do anything. It needs some sort of leverage, some way to pry something open. Maybe it's a little bit of a lip, maybe it's a nail that's sticking out, but once it gets a hold of something, then it uses leverage to actually pull that out. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to a threat agent trying to get into your network, trying to get into your cybersecurity domain. And so it a threat agent needs something to leverage. Well, a lot of times that's people. We call that social engineering. They'll manipulate people to get information or be able to get into the network or be able to do whatever it is that they're trying to do. Or a lot of times it's through credentials. Those people have bad password habits sometimes. And so being able to find a way in through using those credentials. Or perhaps it's using malware. And we'll talk about, we'll define a lot of different types of malware. Or maybe it's somebody inside the company. So if it's an insider threat, they already have some sort of position of authority where they have some leverage already. And how can they use that leverage to get what they want? It may be something simple, or maybe they need to escalate their privilege. Maybe something needs to happen, but they can use that as a starting point. There's also a lot of vulnerabilities that are out there, a weakness in whatever it is. And so this could be a weakness in mis some sort of misconfiguration of equipment. It could be hardware or software. It could be a weakness in protocols. And we'll cover some of that as well. We can categorize vulnerabilities. And if we were to categorize them, we put them into people, processes, and technology. In fact, the cybersecurity cube really applies to vulnerabilities because the people, processes, and technology is the what is vulnerable versus confidentiality, integrity, and availability is how it's vulnerable. And then the at rest in process and in transit is the where it's vulnerable. Although a side note that the at rest in process and in transit is generally speaking when we talk about data and the cybersecurity goes beyond data. It's our software, it's our services, it's everything else. But I suppose at rest in process and in transit also applies to those other things. But generally speaking, those apply to data. Technology can be further broken down into subcategories, hardware, software, protocols, configuration, and physical. So let's give an example of a switch right here. This is a switch. It interconnects different hardware, different computers and routers and different networking devices so they can communicate. So it's, this is a networking device. It is a piece of hardware. It has wires inside. It has some sort of power inside. It has processing. It has memory. And so there are different hardware components inside the switch. Each one of those hardware components has its own set of vulnerabilities to it. There's also the software. So on top of this, there's an operating system or a firmware that runs the switch that gives it instructions on how to operate. And so that firmware is software that somebody programs and it has its own set of vulnerabilities to it, which is one reason why we need to go in and update the firmware now and then because there are known vulnerabilities out there. Then we have the protocols. Protocols are not the hardware and it's not the software software, although the hardware and software is configured to use different protocols. A protocol is something like Ethernet. Ethernet is a set of instructions that two computers can use to communicate back and forth 
together. So it doesn't matter if you're communicating across a Cisco switch or communicating across an HP switch or whatever the brand name of that switch is, it is going to all be the same because the protocol defines how that communication is going to happen. There are weaknesses in protocols and we'll talk about that. Ethernet has its own weaknesses. And so that's something that we need to keep in mind. Then there's the configuration. This is a piece of hardware software and protocols that can be configured. We can get on the switch and tell it how it's going to operate. Somebody's actually going to program this switch to tell the switch how it's going to operate. This is the human interaction side of it. And often this is the issue. I find more often than not, somebody, it's not a hardware weakness, it's just not a software weakness, it's not a protocol weakness, it's something that somebody has gone on and misconfigured a firewall or some sort of device to cause a problem. And so that's configuration issues with it. And then there's the physical aspect of this, is, is this switch inside a networking closet that's locked, that only grants certain people access to it, or is it out in the open? So there's the physical aspect of where this hardware is at. Then there is the process. That's the policy standards, procedures, guidelines, and controls, or really it's even more broad than that because it doesn't have to be written down. It's just the process of how we go about doing our jobs and doing our business, the day-to-day -day tasks, and what we do and don't do as, as just a part of our process. And then there's the people side of this. This is the social engineering side of this. And wh what are the, not only the processes these people have, but the tendencies that they have. So things like, do they maintain good password credentials? We could have a great process in place to maintain great credentials, but if the employee doesn't follow those processes, then that's a problem. And then also the position that the, that the person is in can, have a greater degree of risk. So if it's the CEO or somebody in finance that has a greater degree of risk than other positions in the company. For many of those categories, there's this vulnerability life cycle. So let's use software as a great example of this. So software is something that gets developed by a person or a team. Let's use the example of the firmware on that switch as an example. Let's say the firmware gets released with some sort of vulnerability. Well, it starts out at zero day and it's called zero day because essentially the developers don't realize there's a vulnerability on the firmware. Otherwise, they wouldn't have released it. And so they've had zero days to be able to fix that vulnerability. Then what happens is there's gonna be hackers out there that are trying to discover different vulnerabilities out there. They see a new piece of firmware out there and they start trying to attack it, trying to figure out what is the vulnerability of this? How can we leverage this new update? How can we ex expose something in this and then be able to get into companies and be able to leverage this? And so there is hackers out there that are doing this. And then what happens is at some point in time when they find a vulnerability, then there's this this exposure period that happens. Now, at some point in time, that becomes public knowledge with that vulnerability. And then it goes on to the CVE, or what is known as the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure. So it gets onto these lists, so that way everybody knows that there is a vulnerability with this firmware, so you can act upon it. Do you go back to a prior firmware? Do you take other safeguards to protect this? And then we get into where the company says, okay, we need to fix this, and so somebody fixes that firmware and releases a patch or update. And so what we have here is we have a window of vulnerability. So the window of vulnerability is the time that that vulnerability is released all the way to the time that it was patched. And there's varying degrees of vulnerability within this because by the point in time, there's zero day to the point in time where it's released to the public. It's only the more experienced hackers that really know of the vulnerability and that you're going to be at risk from those more experienced hackers. Between the time that it's released to the public to the time that it's patched, now not only do you have the more experienced hackers, but you also have the less experienced hackers trying to hack and use that vulnerability as well. So you've got this exposure life cycle with this. In this video, we start out by talking about common types of attacks and how those attacks use vulnerabilities. 
We talked about the categories of vulnerabilities of being people, processes, and technology. And then we wrap things up by talking about the life cycle of software vulnerabilities, which really applies to other categories as well, but software is the most prevalent out of them.